and my name is Doug Fink, and in this snippet I'm going to be presenting hosting PowerShell and WPF. So in this application, this WPF app, we're going to add two text boxes and a button. So we can take the first text box, and this will be where we add our PowerShell commands, and we can type them. The second text box will pass into the PowerShell run space and show how we can affect that through PowerShell commands in the, in the GUI. We'll add a button, which will allow us to execute the PowerShell command. So on the text box, we'll add an accepts returns true. And we'll also do a little text wrapping. And on the button, so we'll execute, as well as add a click event. And let's drop into that code right now. So what I've done here also is I've added this reference, the System Management Automation DLL, which is the PowerShell. It contains the PowerShell engine uh, and will allow us to get to work on the PowerShell operations. So here, what we first want to do is we can add a run space. I'm going to do a using. We'll set that up to a run space factory. Oops, there we go. We'll create that run space. And there's a couple things we need to do to the run space in order to make it run within a WPF app. One of them is we need to set the thread options. And here we will use the current thread, which will be the WPF thread, the GUI thread. Next, we want to open up our run space. And down here, just so we don't forget, we will close our run space at the end after we run the command. Next, uh, we want to create um, the PowerShell engine. We'll do using on that. Call that PowerShell. And we'll do a create on that as well. And we'll set the run space to the one we just created. Let's see if we can build that. So far, so good. This basically sets up a PowerShell uh, scripting engine, and we're good to go. We can add scripts, we can add commands, and a whole slew of things. But for now, we're just going to take what's in that text box one and dump it into the PowerShell uh, space, execute it, and return. So now to do that, we will add a script. And the script we'll add is a text box one text. And now we can invoke it. And now that still builds. Um, so what we also want to do is in the run space, we want to affect that second text box. So Let's go to the session state proxy, and we will set a variable name, and let's call it text box, and we will set it to this dot text box two. In effect, what this does is it injects that instance of that text box into the PowerShell run space, and it allows us to name that variable as text box, which we can access in PowerShell with a dollar sign. So we can do a dollar sign text box and get to all the properties that are available uh, on that object. So let's fire this up, see if it still builds. Yep, now we have um, a little window. And let's try typing in dollar text box. Well, that's the name of the variable we injected. We put the dollar sign in it so that PowerShell recognizes it. And let's see if we can set the text equal to hello world. Let's execute that. And we get an error. OK, so we did the open too late, no problem. Let's move this open before we set the session state proxy. Run it again. And one more time, 
We'll set the text. Hello world. Take out that extra quote. Let's see if that works. And yes. So now we can, we're actually interacting through the PowerShell engine and we're interacting inside of a WPF application and we're talking from the PowerShell engine, executing this code and affecting this box. So let's see what else we can do. We can also play around with the, the height. Let's shrink that down to 50. Okay, I don't know if you saw that. This got a little smaller. Let's make it a little even tinier. Let's shrink, shrink the height to 10. And there we go. We can bring it back up. So I'm now scripting um, WPF components through the PowerShell engine that's hosted in my application. So we have the full range of uh, PowerShell here. I can even write a function, set properties, dollar width, dollar height. We'll take this guy up here. Oops. Paste them again. Change that to height. And we can change this to width. So now when we run this, I can say set properties. And we can say, let's say 10, 10. And now we get a little tiny box there. We can resize it again to 100, 100. Sure enough, no problem. So that demonstrates how we can set up the PowerShell run space, set variables into it, pass in objects from a WPF application. Uh, this is not limited to the GUI controls. You can even create your own classes and pass those in in the same way. We can create a PowerShell engine and set its run space, add script. I'm doing it through the screen, but you can add script through code. We invoke it, close the run space, and we're good to go. That's the uh, end. Thank you for listening, and have a good day.